Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new Ray Good Road Trip. Uh, I'm joined by none other than local local boy, Jared O'Mara. You alright, son? Alright, Carl. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Carl, I always say that every time. Carlton, should I say? <laughs> Carlton, yeah, that's, the name. That's, the, name that's the name for the past. Used to, we go by the name of Carlton. Yeah, why was back, that? Back in the days of uh, Sound Aloud and Outer Speed forums, which were two, two local uh, music, Sheffield music yeah. forums dating back to the early to mid 90s. Yeah, man, yeah, man. So thanks, really appreciate you joining me on this little road trip, Jared. You know, a lot of things have been happening for the last few months, you know. Mm. You are a Sheffield MP. Yeah. <laughs> does, it, does it feel real yet? Uh, it, it does now. Uh, yeah. I, I'm settled now, and now I've got a constituency office and yeah. some staff. Yeah. And I'm starting to like do casework, helping like yeah. local people that live in the Allen constituency with some of their like problems they've got in yeah. their day-to-day -day lives. Now it feels real because I'm like really at grassroots level. I'm starting to help people yeah. and make a difference. And, that's amazing. Uh, and that's what, what why I always wanted this job. Yeah. Never thought I'd get it, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I have fun, it's like, <laughs> and it, it's a pleasure to really, you know what I mean, to be able to, to be able to help people from your city. Yeah. And, uh, like, and, uh, that's why I've always wanted to do it, and yeah. I'm doing that now. And yeah. uh, I've got a few weeks, uh, yeah, until I have to go back to London. Yeah. And, uh, uh, long may I be able to sit in Sheffield. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, we don't like that London in Sheffield, do we? Yeah, no, it's, it's too far, and it's too, it's, it's too, it's, it's just not. It's not even like being too far, it's just, they're not like us, are they? Yeah. Like, and it's got, what, five and a pint? <laughs> no, I mean, no, Five and a pint, <laughs> two grand uh, a month for a one bedroom flat. Wow. And it's got damp. <laughs> wow, Chris, yeah. No thanks. So, yeah, we, we will talk about the politics side of it, but the, the main reason why we wanted you in the car today for this next episode of a very good road trip, ladies and gentlemen, is because you've been in and around the local music scene for how many years? Uh, well, if we, if we Too many? Up, when did I start going to see local bands on local circuit, you know, uh, yeah. and some local unsigned bands? Probably about 1999 or something like that. And then, wow, okay. And then I went and did me journalism degree in the year 2000. Yeah. Uh, started freelancing a bit and uh, doing interviews with bands. And uh, like, uh, if right good music uh, were about then, then yeah. I'd have probably been writing for that. But oh, yeah. at the time, I was writing stuff like uh, Sandman and, and stuff like Sandman that. Sandman so, magazine yeah. was a, a, a published free magazine that reviewed local bands a bit like what very good music does but it yeah it were an actual magazine and things weren't yeah. it yeah. yeah that's right so you were nearly the manager of the arctic monkeys jared tell us about that oh that's that's massive conjecture jeff, <laughs> He's jeff, jeff Farida from wildlife uh, music management yeah. was their manager but uh yeah, yeah I, I did uh, a bit of a uh, bit of this bit of that for him uh, as a friend as we were at the time and uh Helps like promote them and get the name out there and online, yeah. etc. Uh, right, wrote some articles about it when I was working. Sure, you said you were the brains behind it all, Jared, to me over a pint <laughs> a few years ago. I'm sure that happened. Oh, oh again, again. Uh, even uh, in the haze of a drunken hour, yeah. when I never aggrandized myself to that extent. No, <laughs> good no, good no, good no. Uh, I'd like to think I played a small part, but that's all it was, a yeah. small part. Yeah, the exactly. songs and, and their work ethic like, got them to where they are, yeah. but uh, I might have speeded the process up, I don't know. Yeah. It's all conjecture, and that's all going by 15 years now. Yeah. Oh yeah, massively, yeah. So Best part of it. So the history of Sheffield music then, we're based in Sheffield, we bear no bones about talking about Sheffield music, because that's where we're from, and that's where we both got into Sheffield exactly, music, yeah. so right back in the days when you were in the sound and then yeah. in the early days of Seven Hills, you were Seven Hills, yeah, 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 yeah. they were the two bands. I used to book you many a time, yeah. Well, that's what you used to do, innit? You were a promoter for a lot of a years long time, at, at yeah. West Street Live, weren't yeah. you? Just talk well, us not, that. well, before that, the Howard, oh, oh, the Howard, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Freelance, well, there's not been a venue in Sheffield, uh, uh, there's not been a venue in Sheffield yeah. in the past, at least, that I've not promoted that. Uh, like uh, when grapes did gigs, grapes, Casbar, Casbar, wow. uh, uh, Green Room, uh, uh, what was that called? Stock Room. Stock uh, Room, bloody hell, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ball Ward did lots of gigs there, <laughs> stuff like that. I mean, so, how, how have you seen the music industry change yourself from booking bands 15 years ago to, to booking bands probably a year or two ago? Well, like, how's, how's it changed for you? Uh, uh, I like to think probably one of the biggest things I did for Sheffield, alongside the rest of the guys at West Street Live, yeah. I was doing it before the Howard, and then yeah. John, John, a guy called John Kibbe King, Rigo Glad, Scalf Slag, lives in Sheffield. Yeah. We were all putting on three inch gigs, and yeah. that's become like the way now. Because yeah. that, that for me, uh, whilst like I said, there's no doors, so the bands don't get a cut in the door, yeah. uh, 
uh, just get free beers or if, if they're lucky. And yeah. I know um, early days of Westfield Live when we just said they wouldn't have money to give bands free oh, beers, yeah. but then they all get free beers at Westfield Live now. Yeah. And it's like, uh, but free entry gigs, uh, for me, I, it's an idea I was passionate about, right, right dating back to the Howard, because it's a way to open up gigs to people that wouldn't necessarily want to pay on the door to see a band because they're sceptical. Yeah. But if it's free, they come in, it's a chance for bands to make new fans. And then if they're any good, they can make uh, 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 the money to pay for the recordings and, yeah. uh, and the petrol, etc. from uh, selling uh, selling uh, the merch, the CDs, T-shirts, stuff like that. We, we think it's that. Proved, it's proved invaluable uh, all the time. And now that's... Uh, uh, the uh, the rule and not the exception, yeah. and you're not seeing as many gigs where bands that have uh, having to charge mates five pound a ticket yeah. and get fifty pence back, and the venue gets four fifty. Yeah. Uh, those days uh, uh, are like on the wane. There's still a few places that do it, but uh, yeah. It's well, not, we we do that at Regal Music. We yeah. we've got four different venues in Sheffield that are all free entry: Washington, Mulberry. I was at uh, Washington for a Regal we Music gig on Saturday. Yeah. Good and money. It was good and money, mate. Miss local MP. Busy. Busy, really happy, friendly atmosphere. Exactly. And people there for the love of music, and that's yeah. what you want to see. Yeah. And like I said, uh, well, I started doing that at Howard, what, uh, took it about 12, 13 years ago. Yeah. And, uh, and like I said, it worked there, and now it works all over Sheffield. Yeah, it and, does, uh, yeah. It, uh, it's great. So when you, you, you've you mentioned the Alex and Monkeys have got their work ethic, and that's what got them where they were and, and they actually played their first ever gig supporting my band at the groups yeah I don't know if I've ever mentioned it to you at all yeah you have and uh, a mutual friend of ours once gave me uh, uh, the uh, recording from the desk yes uh, I've still got that on an yeah, we've got it, yeah, yeah we've got the that the entire set where, yeah. like, and they're doing like covers of the vines and, yeah, and, did, and, and like that you mentioned the, the work ethic but I, I don't see that work ethic in a lot of bands these days and it's kind of disheartening in a way um, what what I noticed about the Arctic Monkeys on their first ever gig is that they locked everybody away for their own sound check to make sure that they got the sound right. Yeah. It was the first ever gig and they did something like that. That is that is unheard of in yeah. bands like it, now. It, exactly, exactly. And some like Matt Accused bands that do that have been pretentious or taking themselves too seriously. Yeah. But, but no, if you're genuinely ambitious and you want to get to the stage where you can make a, a living yeah. uh, out of... Uh, out of um, writing your own songs and selling your own songs to a mass audience yeah. and then uh, uh, selling loads of tickets to big ticket gigs at arenas like they do now yeah. then you've got to have that air of pro professionalism about you yeah. but also you've got to work hard and, yeah. and then conversely I know this sounds like uh, uh, counterintuitive in that sense but you've also not got to take it too seriously yeah. if you're just in a band to, uh, because you want to make money and get the girls, then you're not going to get anywhere. You've yeah. got to do it for the love of it. Yeah. And thing is, Arctic Monkeys—they've always been passionate about what, what they've done. And uh, and you got to have that that passion, that self belief, and that love of music. If you don't have that, then you're not going to get anywhere. My next question is all around, uh, you know, where do bands go wrong? And I've, I've just got one example. John McClaw mentioned it on the last Rate Good Road Trip. He said bands are too quick to want to get onto festival stages and oh, the big lead mill yeah, uh, support yeah. slots and all that kind of stuff without getting the music right it's, it's got to start from getting those tunes mm. perfected and, and and being any good before you can go to that stage aren't they that's one example for me do you see do yeah. you have any other examples of where you see bands go wrong yourself yeah no, no, i couldn't agree more with what john said about that really yeah. and i remember years and years ago i mean i managed bands before as well it's not something that i ever endeavored on getting into again yeah. managing bands because you're not hiding for nothing you are and uh and you get taken for granted and you end up just like a dog's body uh, and, uh, and a dad yeah. rather uh you know, rather than somebody who's getting twenty percent of something. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> Which, yeah, but uh, but now uh, uh, it's like I had a band that I managed in years ago, and they'd only put the second EP out, and they're like, "Why is it not happening?" Uh, <laughs> I know, yeah. yeah. I've put got the second, an hour. second EP out, yeah. They yeah. put took like three track EP out, EPs out, yeah. and then like second EP comes out, and they're like, "Why aren't we signed to a major label?" Yeah, they want why, things why straight away, kids, don't yeah. these days. I know, I know, yeah. And it's like, no, you got to be patient. And like some bands. Uh, like uh, only really start to get traction after they've been going for 10 years and yeah. it's like, you've got to have that self-belief you've got to uh, uh, get your head down and graft yeah. and, uh, and like I said it's it's like what uh, 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 
like ingenuity and, uh, and perseverance uh, together, yeah. uh, they're going to get you there. Paul took him 10 years to get signed. I'd use that example every time to young bands. Yeah, no, yeah. If, it, uh, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But just like, don't give up, don't try and run before you can walk. And uh, I think that's the share lots of lyrics. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, what bands do you see at the minute that you feel have got a good chance of breaking through or have that work ethic that, you know, it just, it should lead to success? And any any names that you want to... Two, two young bands in Sheffield that are like at the moment, uh, yeah. that have, uh, they've got potential. Yeah. Uh, are, uh, uh, Ballymona are a new band that he's got. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Billy and Ewan and Tom. Oh yeah, Billy old Ewan and Tom used to be in Heart Shakes. Yeah. Then they've got a uh, kid of uh, he's bass player Red Faces and he, and he plays with them as well. Oh, okay. uh, so I've said this. Uh, Christine Carlo in the yeah, Isaac. Uh, uh, yeah, that's his name. I think. Yeah. But uh, Christine Carlo in will be on Radio Sheffield the other yeah. day. And uh, I've just been to see them at the tram lines, and uh, I think they've got a lot of potential. I'll see where they go, but they're very new. I think yeah. that was the first Sheffield gig they've done, actually. Wow, okay. Uh, and then uh, I love Perfect Parachute Picture. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And there's another good band, around, another two piece. Uh, Teeth, uh, they've love they played yeah. a few before. Yeah, we've had them a yeah. few times. They're yeah, three uh, new, young, excited bands I've seen that I like. I think have got potential. We had, uh, we had one other, other night at John Joe Keane gig at the Rosa Docks. First ever gig, but those guys have got something going on. Very raw at the minute, yeah. but you know it's the first ever gig. But yeah, yeah there's, there's 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 another there's another batch of bands coming through, isn't there? It, yeah, it's it's nice it's nice to see that. And like, uh, uh, like you, I don't know, like in the what fifteen years or so, uh, 15, 17 years, whatever, I've been going to gigs yeah. in Sheffield. There's always been these peaks and troughs, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, there's been times where there's been some uh, like exciting bands. Uh, uh, they're making progress and yeah. uh, getting a bit of national press and what have you, and then ultimately going on to get signed uh, uh, in some respects. And then, uh, particularly like in the days of Artie Monkeys and, uh, and and John were having to make yeah. uh, Lil Ante, Addison's Brothers Jacket, Long Blondes, all that. Yeah. And then, like I said, there's been times where there's been a, been a bit of a lull, and Sheffield bands have got their heads down. And, Those days were uh, great, weren't they? You know, when we used to go down. Uh, Brighton Beach on a Friday night and all, oh, all the yeah. bands you've just yeah, listened right, with here yeah. we used to all stick together and yeah. it was just they were cracking we're, nice, weren't, weren't Brighton Beach better I felt at Student Union than City yep. Hall yeah, and yeah, most people it. said it were better at City Hall than Student Union no, I, no. I City Hall's shocking yeah. venue for, yeah. for that yeah. no it were it were great that, mm. that's where the Fuzz Club as well you got a Fuzz Club yeah. on Thursday yeah. at Student Union Indy Night they had that and ev- everyone like, or everyone would be there and you know, like, there was a sense of community about that and I suppose that's another point what bands need to do they need to get together they need to network, network. Yeah. yeah, and uh, make friends because if you make friends with bands and then you make friends with their friends their, their friends uh, uh, and those bands yeah, are yours. Yeah. But you got to turn the favour and go to theirs. Well, I had you a, know, in creative area community and sh- you know, in show uh, people support who've got yeah. the same dreams and aspirations as you have. I had a band on other night at Washington. Um, young band. They, they were apologising for how many people they brought. They brought about seven or eight or whatever. That's good. Um, but they, they, were, they were worried because the band before oh, seven or eight more than some bands have brought. Yeah. To my gigs in past. Yeah. Well, yeah, definitely. Promoting. But they, 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 they were worried about it. They said. We don't really know anybody. We're quite like insular people. We've 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 got as like group of friends who all seven of them all yeah. came, but they were they were just like they were worried about that. So we said just get yourself out of network, talk to other bands, swap gigs. Just yeah. you've got to get your out of the bag because seven's yeah. not enough to have a platform just to yeah. rely on having a good single out. Yeah, you're not gonna get any uh, label interest. No. You're just seven or eight emails from school coming to watch you or whatever. Or and that's where numbers on social media, Facebook likes. Yeah. We've done articles on make good music yeah. about how pointless that is, really. Um, it means but no, people, yeah. yeah. And Twitter follows and all that shine. Yeah. <laughs> right yeah. then. So yeah, that that's music. So that so you you you've been around music for a long time, um, but now you've got this you've got a bit of a promotion, aren't you, lately, mate?